Persona 5 Tactica is here. As Persona's first entry in the turn-based strategy RPG genre, you know I had to try it, and from what little I've played thus far about the first three hours of the game, I gotta say, it's good. It's real good. I'm enjoying it a lot. If that's all you wanted to know, by all means click away now, but consider leaving a like and subscribing before you go, it would be very much appreciated. But if you want to know more about the game, my thoughts on it, please watch on. Hmm. Persona 5, Tactica. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and if you know me, you know the channel, you probably know the turn-based strategy games are kind of my jam. So when I found out that there was going to be a Persona Tactics game, there was absolutely no way that I was going to miss out on that. Something that is very, very important to clarify right up front though, I have never played a Persona game before this. This is my first ever entry in the Persona series. I've seen like the first third of maybe the first dungeon in Persona 5 when my girlfriend Jane played it and then dropped it. Beyond that, I've never played any of the games. I only know anything about them through cultural osmosis. And I do know a fair bit. You know, I know a lot of the characters from not just P5, but 4, 3, etc. Uh, have some idea of how Personas work and some of the kind of themes of like balancing school life with these RPG party building battle mechanic types things. But as far as the fine details, story beats, all that type of stuff, completely blind. So going into Persona 5 Tactica has been a very interesting experience. That said, people in my chat are very big Persona fans, as I feel most people are at this point. So they were able to fill me in on the details that I was struggling with when the game didn't already do it for me. And that's the very first thing that I want to say about P5 Tactica, since it's very relevant to my experience. It's very good at introducing these characters and the idea of this world and personas and the Phantom Thieves and all that type of stuff if you've never played the games before. There's some things and references that I had to stop and ask chat like, wait, guys, what is, who is, when did this event, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they would give me clarification. But for the most part, things that you need to know are very well explained. And there's even like a handy dandy little codex, like so many games have nowadays, which I very much appreciate, that gives you keywords, events, story beats from past games, whatever, anything that might be relevant to you that you can then read about on the fly, which is super nice. Like as soon as I come up, you just hit left bumper, read it. It's awesome. Uh, as far as platforms that the game is on, if you want to check it out for yourself, it's on pretty much everything. I've got the list right here. Uh, it is on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and Series S, and Microsoft Windows via Game Pass. I'm playing it via Game Pass right now. Perfectly fine experience. I've not had any issues whatsoever. As far as the game itself, it has a little bit of a slow intro, not gonna lie. A lot of talking, introducing of characters, chatting, hanging out. Uh, but you do start to get into things pretty quick, and once things start, they start. Like, the music pops off, as you would imagine from a Persona game. I, I even know about the Persona soundtracks and how legendary they are. You immediately are getting into new characters, new worlds, high action, lots of really, like, good animated cutscenes. Even though it's this, like, cute, minimalistic, super deformed chibi style, like, there's, all the characters are still so expressive and animated, not just, like, in the terms that they're literally being animated, but in their motions and their expressions, and there's just so much life. I have loved every single cutscene there's been, and there's been a lot thus far. They're not particularly lengthy, but for action scenes, big events that are going on that aren't necessarily involved in, like, a battle, things like that, you see that action happening, and it's awesome. Even the, just the characters hanging out in LeBlanc, the cafe that they, I guess, have their headquarters at, and just chatting with each other are lovingly animated, and it's very, very cute. Characters' personalities come across really fast. It's really nice. It's a good way to intro the game. And then the actual strategic combat has been very interesting thus far. Uh, it's kind of an interesting mix of Fire Emblem meets XCOM, leaning a little bit more on the XCOM side of things. If you're familiar with things like Mario Rabbids, then it'll probably be a fairly familiar type of system to you. I've not played it, but from what I've seen, they're fairly similar. Uh, where you get into cover as long as you have full cover and enemies aren't flanking you, you'll take no damage from attacks. You also will deal no damage to enemies if they have full cover. You'll deal partial damage if they have partial cover. And the whole gameplay loop is centered around taking your party and moving some units into position to knock enemies out of cover and make them vulnerable. So that way your other characters can land shots on them and then get follow-up attacks. The first time you attack a character that has been made vulnerable by being knocked out of cover, who's just they're standing out of cover because they're stupid, then you get a follow-up attack that you can then chain to any other enemies that have also been knocked out of cover who are also vulnerable. So there's a lot of incentive to plan out your entire turn ahead of time and then execute on it. 
something that's similar to games like Into the Breach, which is definitely a different take on strategy from what I'm used to. Things like Fire Emblem, Tactics Ogre, Final Fantasy Tactics, where you're kind of playing the odds and reacting to things on the fly. Here, you've got everything laid out in front of you. There's no hit and miss rates. You know exactly what you can do, exactly what the enemy can do, and it gives you the opportunity to plan exactly what you want your attack vector to be. And that's fun. It's nice. Uh, the battles have been fairly simple thus far, and there's a lot of tutorialization. Like, two hours in, I was still learning new mechanics about battles and things like that. But it never feels super tedious for the most part. Like, you're just, you're in, you're learning new things, and you're having a fun time executing on not just your battle plan and figuring out, okay, if I move X character here, knock this enemy out of position, then Morgana can move up and take a shot, get an extra action, he can go again, maybe knock another enemy out of cover so that say joker can come up and land an attack to get his extra action yada 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 but also when you incorporate things like your persona abilities your big magic attacks that you can use to knock enemies out of cover drain their movement stun them do all sorts of different fun stuff and what's interesting is because you have this big focus on knocking enemies around and moving them in and out of cover you actually get a lot of interaction with that something that I loved from Triangle Strategy back in the day, a couple years ago, that I've seen a lot of games start to incorporate is knockback damage, where if you knock one enemy into another or an enemy into a wall, they'll take extra damage. You know, if it's an enemy that was hit by the guy you just hit, then they'll take damage when they wouldn't normally have, or if you knock an enemy into a wall, they'll take extra damage. And you can also throw enemies around more easily that way. Like, I was very surprised at one point when I charged an enemy into a wall and he ricocheted like off to the side and put him in a vulnerable position that I was then able to move up and take advantage of that I hadn't even expected. So there's still a little bit of adapting on the fly to things that go on, of course, but it's very satisfying to kind of figure out the puzzle of a turn and execute and see it play out. It's also scary when you think that something's going to work out and then for whatever reason it doesn't, and then you're kind of left flat-footed like, uh... <laughs> What do I do now? Um, my characters are going to be vulnerable. If anyone gets knocked out of position, they're going to change a bunch or chain a bunch of attacks together. It's, uh, uh, I can see how it's going to get very intense very quickly. I'm playing on hard currently. The game has not been difficult for me at all. But again, I've only just started not being tutorialized. Like I finished the first boss fight, technically, sort of a boss fight, at the end of my stream last night, and that was the first time that there was really any major threat. I felt like in the battle that was going on. I won't spoil what was going on. I won't show footage of it here, but it was definitely an easy experience getting to that point. And I'm excited to see if the game really becomes more challenging as I go. There is one more difficulty level above hard. I believe it was called Merciless that I didn't want to go with at first just because I didn't know how the game was going to handle its difficulty levels. If it was just like make all enemies bullet sponges, or if there's actually going to be more enemies, different attacks, interesting mechanical things. So I might experiment with it. Uh, if the game doesn't get much more difficult from here, even on hard, I might bump it up to Merciless, because you can change difficulty modes in the middle of a campaign, which is nice. I'm only just starting to get into the actual character customization, but it does seem like there's a fairly decent amount of it. Every character has three different skill trees, with different aspects of those skill trees being unlocked, not only as you unlock different levels in them, but as you progress through the story and get different abilities available to you. So you can spec out characters in like a big skill point regeneration focus, or like big magical damage, but maybe they can only afford to cast one spell early on, or having more utility with their attacks or their special attacks, things like that. And it seems like you can reset those at any time, so there's going to be a lot of capability for characters to be specced out in different ways based on what you want them to do and what kind of team comp you're trying to run. You start the game off with three characters. I have not yet unlocked more, but I think I'm about to get two more. We'll see if they join me or not, or if there's some sort of story thing that goes on that causes them to sit in the background for a while. Uh, but you can get, like I said, all those different skills, plus you can get different weapons. You know, Persona games feature melee weapons, ranged weapons, all that type of stuff that have different ranges, attack damage, different types of like enemy effectiveness. Some are AOE, some are single target, different stuff like that, that I'm very excited to see how that system kind of evolves. Thus far, I've only ever seen single shot weapons, like single target weapons, and then one AOE weapon. And the AOE weapon, that was like a little submachine gun pistol, was far and away absolutely the best option that I have thus far. And I'm excited to see how other weapons kind of come up to level the playing field because right now it just seems like being able to hit a bunch of enemies in an aoe with your basic attack is excellent 
especially when the whole goal is to like stun enemies, get extra attacks, all that type of good stuff. As far as complaints that I have about the game, I have a couple, but they're pretty minor. Enemy variety thus far has been a little lackluster with pretty much just two main enemy types that I've fought, but I'm sure that's going to get expanded on as the game goes on. Again, I'm still basically getting tutorialized. And then one boss enemy that I fought, again, right at the very end of my stream. Uh, but I'm excited to see what different types of enemies actually show up to take advantage of the different gameplay systems that we have going on. Because it definitely seems like anything you can do to the enemy, they can do to you. And that can make things very scary very quick if they incorporate more enemies with different types of abilities that mirror your own. Uh, another thing that's very annoying is the voice work itself is good. Like, I really am enjoying the voice work, especially as someone who hasn't played Persona 5 and I'm not familiar with these characters. They sound really good. From what my chat was saying, it's pretty much all the same VAs except for the new characters, obviously. Uh, so I, I'm not complaining about that. I'm more complaining about the fact that sometimes the way the sound design is, you'll get multiple characters' voice lines overlapping in extremely short succession to the point that they're actually layered over each other. And I mean, I have hearing damage to begin with, so I can't make out a lick of what they're saying. Not that it really matters, because they're typically just in-game barks. But it's very disconcerting. It's very loud and un uncomfortable. So I'm hoping that's something that Atlas can maybe work on patching. Uh, also, and apparently this is just a traditional hallmark rite of passing that you have to go through if you start playing a Persona 5 game. But Morgana is so annoyingly verbose all the time. Like, I like him in normal conversation, I like his VA, I like his lines, I like his character, but in battle, every single thing that you do, like, yeah, you did it, you're in great cover, that was a great shot, attack again, we can do this, that was a critical, good job, <laughs> it's like, please, stop talking so much. And like I said, apparently this is expected. My chat was laughing about the fact that I was already so fed up with Morgana's nonsense. Because apparently they all have felt that way about Morgana in the course of playing P5, Strikers, Royale, all that type of stuff. So it's just my turn to finally experience it, I suppose. But it really gets annoying when those voice lines are happening, reacting to what it is that you're doing. While then also having like character in battle barks happening. So again, they're layered over each other. And it's already unnecessary noise. Just amplified by its own nonsense so that's a complaint it really has not had a huge effect on me if it really bothers you you can obviously just turn the voices off and then problem solved um but it is there so i figured i should mention it controller works great i even though i'm playing on pc i'm using my xbox gamepad works phenomenally i'm always the most comfortable with turn-based strategy games on a controller growing up playing things like final fantasy tactics fire emblem controller was the way to go for me I haven't tried mouse and keyboard but i imagine it also works pretty well i don't imagine that there'd be many complaints because the control scheme is fairly simple you only have so many controls to go with at a time uh, and then as far as things like the story are concerned i'm i'm interested you know again i don't know these characters i don't know these worlds but i'm compelled by the characters that i've seen and i want to see more i want to see where the story is going i want to know why these characters who have already experienced so much in the course of the story events of persona 5 because this is a direct sequel to it how they react to this stuff given the fact that they are these powerful warriors and now they've lost their powers and all this different stuff so i'm excited to see where that goes i want to see more of the tactical gameplay evolve and overall i'm very impressed uh largely i've seen review scores praising the game quite well i've seen a few reviews that say that the game starts to fizzle out in its second half we'll see if that winds up being the case i obviously can't attest to it because i've only played it for three hours but uh, i absolutely plan on playing more if you're interested in seeing me play more of the game or in any guides, videos, coverage I have about it, all that stuff will be happening. I'm going to be streaming as often as possible. I'm going to start pumping out videos. I'm already working on my first tips videos for anyone who is maybe not a tactics fan, who just is a Persona fan and is trying this game out, or who just wants to try the game and wants to get a little bit of a head start on what they should be looking for in combat. I'll be working on all that type of stuff. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what this one entails, and uh, I hope that you are as well. So... That said, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. First impressions are great. Definitely check it out, especially if you have Game Pass. Download it. It's on there for free. Check it out. Uh, and if you are at all interested, check it out on other platforms, too. You'll probably enjoy it. Uh, but that said, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. 
Thank you, as always, to all of my supporters from Patreon, Caffeine System, 18C, Mike Ridings, Navi, Kejo, FV, Christian Soto, Chris Muller, Yoking Haddock 67, and Riley Thatcher. And then from my YouTube members, Canadian Animator Guy, IR Fine, Schnorbel, Tojo Jr., Federico, Luxor, Caffeine System, Tenshi, Matthew Berry, King Tony, John Eaton, Captain Planet, Arbitrary Librarian, Light B, Midday Moonlight, All I Want for Ludmus is You, Matthew Snyder, Avery Bailey, RJD, Michael Poole, Dre, and X13. You guys make the channel possible. You make it so much easier for me to keep doing YouTube, even as I'm working part-time and all that type of stuff. So thank you all so much for the support. I very much appreciate it. With those people thanked, hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.